You are on the platform and it's Friday. It's time for Free Speech Fridays, brought to you by the Free Speech Unions Union. They are your champions, the champions of free speech in New, uh, in New Zealand. Visit them at fsu.co.nz, I think it is, or .com. Search Free Speech Union New Zealand and... Um, Geez, they've had a busy week, actually. I want to catch up with Jonathan Ailing on the program next week. Uh, they've made some amazing revelations about the true attitude of Victoria University to free speech um, and just how scared many in our academic uh, halls of power in the ivory towers are. Joining us on the program today, very nice to uh, welcome back uh, Muriel New, uh, Newman from the New Zealand Centre for Political uh, for Political Research. Muriel, lovely to have you with us again. Uh, welcome. Thank you, Sean. And uh, Morris Williamson, Auckland uh, councillor. I was going to call him a curmudgeon, but he's probably oh, less, than, less or more than that. Uh, how are you, Morris? Good morning, Sean, and good morning, Muriel. All right. Um, guys, I know you've probably dragged yourselves away from the long goodbye which is the last AM show on News Hub. And today is the last day for News Hub in its current format to operate. Oh, Muriel, you're prob- are you in mourning? Are you wearing black today? <laughs> no, no. Unfortunately, you know, it's um, one of these situations where, you know, what goes around comes around. I mean, you know, if you look at the uh, track record of uh, legacy media, you know, over the last four years, um, they have not done themselves any benefits at all, really. You know, they've been very biased. The public have seen that. And so I don't think there's going to be a lot of mourning going on. Yeah. All right. Uh, You, Morris, a sad day in the Williamson household. Have you got your Auckland City Council flag at half-mast? Uh, no, but I was watching the long goodbye. I thought you meant the one I was watching, which was Andy Murray at Centre Court in Wimbledon. Oh, He gave a brilliant speech and he had all of the Roger Federer's and Novak Djokovic on the court. It was a fantastic last goodbye. Yeah. That I'll tell you what, actually that funny you raised that. I used to hate Andy Murray. I thought he was an arrogant young upstart. But you look at that career... Oh, it's fantastic. And a fantastic career mm-hmm. and actually a really good outspoken guy. Uh, you yeah. always knew what Andy Murray thought, didn't you? Yeah, you did indeed. Yeah. Look, um, just he was can a I fighter too, quick... wasn't he? Yeah, he was absolutely he was Muriel. He was nuggety. Nuggety yeah. is the word you use. Every point he had to grind it out. Hey, Sean, just talking with regards to the media, when I did my valedictory, I said uh, I tried to sell TV1 when I was broadcasting minister, but couldn't get the cabinet to agree, and Bolger told me to leave it. And I tried three times, but I couldn't back when it was worth something. And I said in my valedictory speech, just look at the schedule for TV1, the flagship carrier, the the carrier for cultural icon, as it was called. Uh, Look at the schedule of what it's got on uh, tonight. That's when I did my valedictory back in 2017. I just looked at TV1 uh, schedule last night. And after the news finishes, it was Kirsty and Phil's Love It or List It from England, followed by, listen to this, followed by Grand Designs Australia, followed by Coronation Street. Now, tell me that is a flagship of New Zealand culture yeah. on our main TV channel. It's yeah. just bullshit. And, Muriel, I've got to say, too, we looked... Uh, actually, someone texted into the programme this week. He said, how can it be right that the government continues to fund the woke crap on Shortland Street, but they axe fair go? It was a mm. really good point. You have to wonder about you know, the boards of these organisations, don't you? You know what um, planet they're actually on because they don't seem to be living the lives that ordinary Kiwis are living at the moment and seeing what we're seeing because the bias and, as you say, the crap, it stands out so strongly, yet they seem oblivious. I don't know what's going on. Well, here's an interesting fact. There are now two documentary movies being made about um, Jacinda Ardern, right? One of them funded to the tune of, I think, $850,000 by New Zealand On Air, which seems unnecessary taxpayer funding. But guess who was head of the organisation that approved that funding? A guy called Alistair Carruthers, who's a personal friend of Jacinda Ardern's 
and is still the chair of Television New Zealand. And turning out millions of dollars of losses year on year. I mean, the, their loss is just crippling. Yeah. And um, I just cannot believe you leave a board or a chairman in place that's delivering those sort of results. Yeah. But, guys, let's be honest. This, well, the national part of this coalition government appears to be horribly, horribly woke. They are now, through Paul Goldsmith, promoting a piece of media interference funding legislation that was dreamed up by Willie Jackson, Morris. Look, um, I get accused quite regularly because when I'm on your show, people say, oh, of course you would say that, you're a national supporter. Well, let me get it clear now. This is the biggest piece of rubbish I've ever seen. I don't know what the hell the National Party is thinking. I think Act's got it absolutely square on for a whole range of things. That's to do with the fair news, digital media. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. As well. I mean, it is just literally the National Party going down a rabbit hole that I would never have believed in my life they would do. I can't figure out why they've done it, Muriel. Even Chris Trotter, who at heart is a lefty, said yesterday, this is one of the stupidest things he's ever seen the National Party done. It's like trying to shake down the mafia. You're not going to be able to. It's a, it's a terrible thing, because if you think about New Zealanders, we love sharing stuff, right? So we see something great from the platform. We share it amongst our networks on Facebook, you know, every way we can. And what they're trying to do is actually impose a bloody big, sorry, a big brother you can, onto our You can say bloody Muriel, bloody's okay. <laughs> And, 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 you know, I was looking at the submissions on the bill, right? And Google pointed out that in 2020, they delivered something like $40 million worth of benefit to news outlets by promoting their news stories and delivered the traffic. And you think to yourself, well, why on earth would you try and, and muddle that up? Why would you try and undermine it? And, of course, Meta, which, you know, we haven't probably realised, Facebook, they don't like news links because it takes people away from their site and away from their ads. And so, in a way, they're doing the news um, outlets a service by actually allowing links on their site. And you yeah, think, well, you is, know, it's you know been what? working. This is, Why that's interfere? That's all BS from these legacy media companies. They're just upset that the advertising market is, the digital advertising market is, is tough. This is simply, I think, I think all that, the reason it doesn't make logical sense, Muriel, is because it's all complete BS. This is basically a kind of Soviet-like thing. You want to do business in New Zealand, we are going to, with our old mates in legacy media, Mate, you pay a levy on that, and when, then we'll distribute it to our friends in legacy media. That's the reality of what's being proposed but, here, isn't but it, Morris? Sure, sure. Let, me, let me take you back to National Party Foundation. It was founded to be a more market-friendly, less government invention. In fact, its article at the beginning said, we want to see more business in government and less government in business. Here you've got a total marketplace where if you have got people using your product illegally, then you can go to court, yeah. the courts will find against them. Go to the marketplace, let it happen, because the supply of that product going out and being screened to billions of eyeballs is the best you can ever have for your product being watched more. Mm -hmm. So this is... Well, my, my litmus, litmus test would always be if Willie Jackson thinks it's a great idea, there's something wrong. And the fact that National Party's gone racing in to support it makes just no sense at all. Um, I, I absolutely hear hey, um, one, one thought I had, um, Sean, one good outcome from this would be if the government decided after listening to all the submissions and getting the select committee to do its work, it decided to discharge the bill. So that's what we should be calling for because otherwise they're going to come out of this looking real bad and the public will hate it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. How often does that, guys, you've both been in Parliament, I haven't. Has a bill ever been defeated at the Select Committee stage after introduction? Yes, yes. Ooh. In fact, many bills yeah. get seriously modified, some of them so heavily modified they bear no resemblance to the original, 